one and hi everyone oh we're live hi everyone welcome to wonder series this is wonder series wednesday uh, i am denise stegall the ceo and curator here at living healthy list and your host of the wonder series we're here every week to answer those questions that you have whether it's about your health overall wellness, personal development, or bringing some fun back into life. You know, those burning questions that have been kind of niggling in your brain, but you've either just never asked or you were too afraid to ask. Um, maybe you thought you should know the answers, but let's be honest, we are not born knowing everything. And luckily we don't have to because we have an amazing group of experts every week who can answer the questions that we have and really help us to elevate our life, to bring things um, to that next level and to basically live that healthy, happy lifestyle that we have been all searching for. So today I'm really excited to talk to uh, Dr. Emily Kirkwald and Emily is a pharmacist. Okay. She's also a natural flaming family planning educator. She empowers women to care for and love their bodies through teaching them how to track their cycles and use that information for their own health and or family planning. Uh, Dr. Emily lives up in the Twin Cities uh, in Minnesota, not too far from where I am, with her wonderful husband and her two kiddos. And Emily, hi. Hello. Thank you. Thank so you much so much for being here. Oh, I'm so excited. Me too. Me too. So tell us a little bit. You're a pharmacist, but you're a natural family planner. How does that work? Right. Well, I am a pharmacist by background and I'm very proud to be a pharmacist. But you know, one of the most important jobs that pharmacists have is to identify when people do not need medication. And so I take that role seriously when it comes to women's health. And so I teach women their options for family planning. So yes, I do know about medication hormonal options, but I also teach women about natural family planning methods. So I teach them how to track their cycles and use that information, just like you read in my bio for health or family planning. And I teach online classes and I work one-on-one -on -one with women and or couples uh, virtually. What does it, what does that all entail? Like natural family planning. I have one thing in my mind, but I'm sure there's a lot more involved. So please delve into that. Tell us more about what natural family planning is and why it's important. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of myths out there about natural family planning, and the term itself can be a little bit confusing. Um, if you search natural family planning in the Webster Dictionary, it will tell you it's a method of birth control by paying attention to your body's symptoms. How I like to describe natural family planning is it's teaching women to learn their body's natural signs of fertility, to keep track of those signs, and then to use that information to either monitor their overall health or to avoid a pregnancy effectively and naturally or to achieve a pregnancy. And it is really important, even if you're not at a point in your life where you're thinking about family planning, for girls and women to know their cycles. Mm -hmm. The American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, or ACOG, has called our menstrual cycles the fifth vital sign. The information is that useful. And it's not just knowing when the bleeding of your period comes. Yeah, there's a lot more involved there. And I think I know for, for example, growing up, I didn't really know anything. And and as I've gotten older, obviously I've learned a little bit more and understood a little bit more. But I think the cycle piece is really, I think it's confusing. 
Yeah, it definitely can be. Um, it definitely can be. And especially when we're just kind of told, at least I was told as a girl, okay, your period's going to come. You have to figure out how to manage your period and then just kind of wait until the next one comes. You might have some symptoms, like just kind of deal with those. Like, it's kind of like, this is something that happens to you and you just have to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what uh, I remember too. Um, and I think, you know, I wasn't too young. I was probably 12. But for a 12 year old, that's, that's intense. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And unfortunately, I don't think that there's enough people talking to girls and women about why we have cycles and what this information means for our body beyond that bleeding of a period. Mm -hmm. And so you, know, that's you mentioned I'm really passionate about teaching. Yeah. It's so important. And, you know, it's funny, you mentioned um, uh, ACOG. And I remember back in the day when I worked for a pharmaceutical company for a short period of time, I was actually at one of their conferences. And what I found with going to the gynecologist was the information that they had for me was very vague. Yeah, yeah, it is. And um, unfortunately, you know, Physicians have a lot to learn in medical school, right? And the female body is complex. And um, yeah, the way that, you know, medical school training is, but also how our traditional medical system is, mm -hmm. you know, OBGYNs have a very short window of time with a patient. So it's really, okay, here's, you know, a little bit of information as quick as possible to get you what you need and get you on your way. Sounds about right. Um, so how do we kind of recommit, since we've been talking about recommitment this month, how do we recommit to our health and that natural um, natural planning, whether you said like whether it's to achieve a pregnancy or to prevent a pre pregnancy, how do like what's our first step? What do we need to know? Yeah, yeah. I love to talk about how natural family planning can be a great tool for us as women to know our bodies better. And so the first step is really knowing what are the signs that your body is already giving you mm -hmm. about your fertility and about where you're at in your cycle. So one of the main signs that I teach women to pay attention to is that we have a normal bodily fluid called cervical fluid or cervical mucus. And throughout the cycle, your body will produce the cervical fluid, which you can pay attention to just by every time you use the bathroom, you can wipe and pay attention before you throw that to toilet tissue away is there any cervical mucus present and what is it like? And what cycling women will notice is that near the middle of your cycle, near the time of ovulation, your cervical fluid will change in consistency to be more clear in color, more stretchy, more slippery feeling. And that's a sign to know that you are in this ovulation time period. I see. And that's something that girls need to know pretty, pretty early on. I'm kind of, I'm, I guess I'm surprised that it's not something that we talk about on a regular basis. Like kind of, you know, women's health is something that we really don't talk about enough. I mean, women, we do kind of one-on-one, -on -one, but when it comes to our overall health, you know, obviously um, with our younger daughters. And when I was young, we never really talked about it. Um, and even as we get older, you know, our body, women, our bodies are forever changing, right? Yes. <laughs> and so like the conversation really needs to start when we're young and continue throughout. Definitely. So why is it really important though? So for cycling women, they need to, you know, they need to pay more attention to their body, but tell us a little bit more about like the importance of this. Like what are the different reasons, obviously pregnancy, no pregnancy, but yeah. about what can these things tell about our overall health? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. And I'm so glad that you asked it. 
Um, because yeah, even if family planning isn't on your mind, even for young girls that are just starting to cycle, knowing your time of ovulation is not just about knowing for planning for a pregnancy, but our female bodies were made to ovulate. And so if you're not ovulating, that can be a sign that something is off with your hormones. It's also helpful to identify when that time of ovulation is happening and when it's happening from cycle to cycle because that time period is related to different hormone levels. And so the time period between having our period and that time of ovulation is really when our estrogen level is the highest. And so if there's a change from cycle to cycle in the number of days in between your period and ovulation, that can be a sign that something's off with your estrogen. Conversely, if there's a change from the time after ovulation to your next period coming, that is related to your progesterone levels. And so if there's a change in the number of those days, that can be a sign that something's off with your progesterone. And those are two main female hormones that then have effects throughout the body. Is this something something that that is typical not typical but more common than we think when it comes to younger girls because i'm thinking back to when i was in high school and you know my girlfriends and i you know we kind of talked about it you know <laughs> you know we have a period you know kind of how how young girls are but i also remember having a friend who had really bad periods um very heavy very painful um and I guess thinking about the estrogen progesterone um, balance, could that have been something that was going on? Definitely, definitely, yep. So again, something that seems natural, like, um, you know, she just had a, you know, she, she got the unlucky ticket that she got the bad period, but obviously now we understand that there was something else going on. Yes, yes, mm. and unfortunately, what I find and what women tell me is that they go to their physician with some kind of period issue and they are prescribed birth control. Mm -hmm. And birth control can definitely help the issue in that it stops the woman from having natural cycles. It shuts down our body's natural functioning so those symptoms go away. But if the woman would ever decide to come off of birth control, those symptoms could come right back because the birth control isn't actually fixing the hormone imbalance that's going on. So there, so then I guess there, that said, there is a way to possibly fix that naturally. Yes, yes. And working with a holistic provider, someone like a naturopath, or a, there are physicians who are trained in some of these natural family planning, fertility awareness methods that can really work to support these kind of symptoms from a more natural standpoint. Interesting. Um, you know, this is just one of those conversations that I truly wish I'd had when I was 15 <laughs> instead mm -hmm. of 50. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but let's let's talk a little bit more about birth control because we, you know, we we, we both know that it, it has its place. Um, mm -hmm. But like I was saying to you earlier, you know, when I was fifteen and I was um, I was having really bad, painful periods. Um, apparently, I had um, a cyst or cysts, and so that was that was what they said here. This is what you have. So here's the birth control. Um, so obviously, there's a place. Um, but let's, so let's talk a little bit more about birth control, good, bad, and different. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, birth control, the most popular form of it is the birth control pill still. And it's a combination of those hormones. I mentioned estrogen and a synthetic form of progesterone. And really what birth control is doing is it's tricking your body into thinking it's already pregnant so that you're not ovulating. Um, it works. That's its main mechanism is stopping ovulation. Mm -hmm. um, but it also works a couple of other ways too. It actually um, impacts the cervical mucus um, and it impacts the lining of the uterus as well. And with those actions, basically it's making it so that the environment is 
not sperm friendly and not friendly so that if you did ovulate that an egg could develop there. Interesting. Um, really haven't thought it through so this this way you know what does it really do you know i think we know it you know if you, you go on birth control because you know you want to avoid pregnancy and i don't think any of us ever maybe people do now but i don't think i know i didn't ever question you know how does this work right right yeah. interesting it's not always fully explained like that. And, you know, it, it is very interesting, you know, for me as a pharmacist, thinking about how does this medication work and how do all the other medications work, you know, for all other kind of conditions. And it really is very interesting to me that birth control is really the only medication that we prescribe to perfectly healthy people to shut down a body's natural functioning. Cycling is something natural and we're stopping that process versus other medications are generally prescribed when you have an illness, when you have a symptom, when you have a deficiency to help your body get back to its more natural state. Right, and more often than not, medications that we take are short term. Yes, except for birth control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know, I know. I mean, I use myself as as the guinea pig. I mean, I started when I was fifteen. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a period um, when I, after I got married that I went off birth control, and uh, my husband and I uh, considered having children. Um, and you know, I kind of wonder if being on birth control for so long really was the challenge. Yeah, yeah, you know, there is research, there is evidence out there that shows that birth control can definitely affect future fertility and definitely cause delays in fertility and even just delays in having regular cycles going forward. Some women get off of birth control and they don't even have a period again for months. You know, it's funny, most of the time when you think of, of girls not having a period, it's, you know, you think of the gymnasts when they were young and, you know, how much, um, how thin they are and how much uh, exercise that they're doing. But you don't really think of that for, for other women who are other girls who aren't in that situation. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really, I mean, it really is an individual thing on, on the one hand, but at the same time, we're all going, our bodies as different as we are they're pretty similar. Right. Right. Yeah. So when you have a new client, what is the, what one, why do they come to you and what's the conversation? Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of women come to me because they are looking for an alternative to birth control. So either they have some kind of religious reason where they would like to choose not to use birth control, or they've had some pretty bad side effects from birth control. They don't feel good on it. And so they're really looking to avoid pregnancy, but do so effectively and naturally. Mm -hmm. So then what that conversation looks like is exactly, you know, what we talked about with identifying what are your body's natural fertility signs. So we talk about cervical mucus tracking as an option. We also talk about there's an at-home device where a woman can do a simple urine test at home and get a reading of her um, hormone levels to know where she's at um, near and at the time of ovulation and be able to use that as an optional sign. Um, and then really talking about, you know, when whenever we're talking about natural family planning, it's, it's only going to be effective if you are able to keep track, if you're able to pay attention to those signs and keep track of them. And so that's why I love to present women options. These mm -hmm. are the multiple different fertility signs your body gives you. Let's figure out what works best for you and your lifestyle and what you're motivated to keep track of. And then it's how do you keep track of this information? And then once you have that information, knowing, okay, my plan is to avoid a pregnancy. So I'm going to avoid unprotected intercourse during this time period. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. What about those women who have those difficult periods that kind of get all of the, the, 
the effects, the, the migraines, the cramps, the back cramps, all of that. Mm-hmm. How does, how can natural family planning help those people? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, natural family planning can really give a descriptive picture of what's going on besides just those outward symptoms. So by noticing when is my time of ovulation and what are the days looking like, you know, in between my period and that time, um, using that information and especially when you're keeping track of it from cycle after cycle, you can look back and see okay, this was my normal pattern. Now my pattern is changing. And this is where I'm noticing I'm having more symptoms. This might mean that something's going on with my hormones. And again, giving more evidence that there's something more to look into. Mm, I see. I see. Because I know for me, that was one of the things that I struggled with, um, was headaches. I would get migraines. I would get horrible cramps. Um, And at the time, now, obviously, we're going back quite a few years now. But it was the only option. It was like, either you take this or you just deal with side effects mm-hmm. or the effects. Oh. Um, and I wish I, I wish I'd had somebody else to talk to because when you, the way you put it, when it comes to the, you know, like looking at a person, looking at your body um, in in a holistic way, not just the the few days of the the pain and the and and the actual menstrual cycle. Um, there's a lot more going on that we don't understand. Mm-hmm. And truly, if it's, you know, just those couple of days, um, one, obviously, you know, there could be something going on. I know for me, I had uh, an ovarian cyst. Um, the question I come up with now is, what caused that? Mm-hmm. And, you know, back then, we didn't even think to ask. I didn't even think to ask. Yeah. And so when it, you know, so it's, it's, it's very unnatural, I think, some of these conversations that we have with our doctors, um, especially for younger girls. And if the doctor is uh, a man, or, and, and even if it's a woman, depending on 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 the um, the girl. Mm-hmm. So, how do we start having these conversations? Um, because you know, teenagers. I mean, I, like I said, I was twelve. You know, it's it's embarrassing. You know, oh, I don't want to know about that. How do we have these conversations? with our daughters, our granddaughters, um, to help them see what is really going on without it being embarrassing and, you know, kind of like a taboo. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's so important that we are talking to girls about this. And this is actually one of the things that I love to do, too. I'll go and speak to a group of teenage girls and just talk to them about our cycles and about how your period is not just this inconvenient bleed that happens every month. No, it's happening happening because you did ovulate and your body is shedding some of that excess lining and getting ready for the next cycle. And your hormones are working together in this natural pattern. And I think what's really important in these conversations um, with you know, our female friends or with girls is that it is perfectly normal for us to feel differently during different parts of our cycle mm-hmm. that you know we're cyclical by nature not just um because of the hormones that change but also our energy changes throughout our cycle to it it's all linked together and so being able to keep track of your cycle you can then link that to other parts of your life too. So you can start paying attention to, oh, when do I feel the best? Oh yeah, that seems to be related to this part of my cycle or, oh, you know, why am I feeling kind of isolating right now? Oh yeah, I'm in this part of my cycle. That's a normal thing for me to be feeling right now. And just reminding ourselves that, you know, we don't have to feel the same exactly every day and using that as, as really a means of empowerment for girls. Mm -hmm. I love that. I absolutely love that. It's so funny. As you were talking about this, I was thinking about uh, a friend of mine who I went to high school with and she was one of those people, like you could just tell by the look on her face that that day you needed to stay away from her for -hmm. whatever reason, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and so thinking, you know, I knew now I really understand that it was, she was somewhere in her cycle that um, just made her a little crazy that day. 
that's okay. It's like, it's okay to have an off day. And, and having that information of your cycle can help you realize like, okay, I'm not crazy. Like, this is just something normal that's happening. And mm -hmm. Yep. We've got a couple of comments over here. Let's just take a look and let's see. Oh, this is this one's interesting. Living Healthy List said, <laughs> such a great conversation. Our young girls deserve, deserve more information and education regarding their bodies. Thank you, Emily. Um, actually, it looks like that was Debbie Cassidy. Hi, Debbie. Thank you for listening. Um, so there's so much more information that I know you can share with us. And I know you have an awesome podcast. So I'd like you to tell us a little bit about the podcast, what you share there and how people can find it. Yeah, yeah. I love having the podcast. My podcast is called Holy A Woman. And it's all about how can we celebrate our whole womanhood. So we talk a lot about natural family planning and being in touch with our cycles. But we also talk about just other natural approaches to health. How can we support our mental health, uh, emotional health, physical health, all of it. Um, Denise was on the podcast and that was excellent. Uh, the podcast is available on major podcast players. So Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or you can go to my website, nfpharmacist.com slash podcasts. And on that page right there, it'll give you a direct link to listen. Awesome. It's a great podcast. There's so much great information. And it was so fun being on your podcast. We had a great conversation. As always. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I really enjoyed the episode with you and I really enjoy yeah getting to meet other more naturally minded practitioners and having these conversations again like really empowering women and mm -hmm. like you said with living healthy list it's about having fun too and celebrating who we are as women absolutely i think we take we tend to take things so seriously and you know you get to a stage in life where you kind of got to go you know there's more to life than there's more to life yeah. And that fun piece, I think, is really important. And I think understanding your body can make that a lot easier because then you're not stressed out about it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if we don't know something, it tends to be scary, right? Mm -hmm. But if we have more information, then we can feel more confident in ourselves. Absolutely. And that's really why I love doing the Wonder Series because it's, you know, those questions that, you know, we've been wondering about, but like I said, you know, maybe we're too embarrassed to ask them because, you know, maybe we feel we should know the answer mm -hmm. and Googling things doesn't always help either. Right. <laughs> so if you have any questions about your cycles, don't, don't Google it. Uh, connect with Dr. Emily. Emily, I know you have a wonderful, wonderful gift for our, uh, our audience today. So I'd like you to tell us about that. I do. Yes. I have an, on-demand workshop called Know Your Body with Natural Family Planning. And I'd love for anyone listening today to access that workshop. So all you need to do is go to workshop.nfpharmacist.com slash LHL for a living healthy list. And put in your information there and you will get access to this free workshop where we'll talk more about what does natural family planning really mean how you can really use it mm -hmm. um, you know all of your body's natural fertility signs and there's time built in the workshop too for reflection and how does this really help me know my body better i love it it's it's and it's really it, because it's on demand it's really simple for people to to start watching it and take some notes and you know kind of start and stop with you know i love the fact that it's it's one of those things that people could do on their own time yeah. So Emily, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, in the last couple of minutes that we have, what is, I think, the, the, the first tip? What is, you know, kind of last before we head out? What's one last thing that you would want people to know about natural family planning, their cycle? Um, what's, what's something that we haven't touched on that you want to quickly tell us about? Yeah, I think the one thing I want to leave those listening with is for the female audience is that you have options when it comes to women's health. You have options when it comes to avoiding pregnancy, achieving pregnancy, or for managing any sort of symptoms that are related to your cycle. And so I just really encourage you to be an advocate for your health. Um, if someone tells you this is the only option, 
ask if that's really true or seek out some alternatives so that you are really making an informed decision about your health. Perfect. That is a perfect thing to leave us with, Emily. Dr. Emily, thank you so much for being here, uh, for giving us this great information. And for those of you who are listening, on those of you who are catching us uh, on the replay, don't forget to uh, check out the workshop at workshop.nfpharmacist.com slash LHL. Everyone have a great week. Emily, again, thank you for being with us. We will see you here next week on Wonder Series Wednesday. Until then, I will leave you with this. Healthy living, happy life. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.